I've got a tidy bit of unfinished business to cover off with regard to this Bang & Olufsen BO System 10 that I featured in a video previously. Now normally the amount of information I've got here wouldn't warrant a separate video, but the last few weeks have been far from normal and I think now is a good time just to put out a very simple video. So let's get on with it. Now you might remember from the previous video if you saw it that this device is unusual for something of this size in that it had a phono stage built in, a phono preamp, so you could put a normal record player which required an external phono stage into this and have it amplified by the built-in one. But you might remember in the previous video when I did plug a record player into this, the sound really wasn't great. It, it didn't go very loud at all before it got rather thin and therefore you had to keep the volume quite low to keep the bass in there and as a result the volume when played records was really quite quiet. That was also an issue when it came to playing radio and tape. Uh, you could turn the volume up to perhaps halfway, it sounded fine, but any further it really stripped off the bass and it ended up quite a thin, harsh, unpleasant sound that you wouldn't want to listen to. Well apparently that's a feature. It's mentioned in the manual. It says that this will happen. But it does say there's one way to get around it. There's no restriction on the external speakers. And again, that's something you might remember about this. It does have external speaker sockets, which again is a bit unusual for a device of this size. Now, those sockets were recommended to be used with Bag & Olufsen CX50 speakers. As I was intrigued about this, I thought, if I plug some CX50s into this, will it sound an awful lot better? So. I managed to find some really nice CX50s. It turns out there are people on eBay, with it being Bag & Olufsen, you get this whole kind of infrastructure around it. There are people getting old CX50 speakers, taking out the perish rubber and the foam and stuff, refurbishing them, putting new speaker grill covers on, painting them, making them look like brand new. And uh, I got hold of a set of those, so let's have a look at them. Now, I'm really looking forward to having a look at these speakers. They're nothing special as far as the technology goes, They're just small bookshelf speakers. In fact, they were the cheapest and most basic speakers in the Bang & Olufsen range at the time. But they had a good long run and people seem to quite like the quality of them. But it's not that that I'm really interested in. I just want to have a look at this redesign that this seller's done for me. Yeah, it pops on camera just like it pops in real life. So this is a cloth grill. Now the way that these are set out, we've got the woofer at the top and the tweeter at the bottom, and that's because they thought that was better for a bookshelf speaker system. I suppose if you put the woofer at the bottom, you might get into some issues with sort of vibrations on shelves or something. There'd be some reasoning behind it. Now the case, I believe that's aluminium. So you've got an aluminium case, cloth speaker grill, and then on the back here, whoops, a bit heavy there, this is plastic. I have just found out I don't have the speaker cables for them. Oh dear, I thought these came with fixed cables with a DIN plug on the end, but they don't. Maybe Amazon would have some DIN to DIN cables, that's probably the best option actually. I'll go looking on there, maybe I can get some by tomorrow. But as far as these speakers go, I really like the look of those. Better late than never, the parts arrive for the speaker cable I'm going to make up. Now the important one really is this female DIN connector, which is something you don't see very often. And the reason I'm putting some importance on this is Knowing Bang & Olufsen, I wouldn't be surprised if I can't get that to connect down there because they'd probably have a specially long one on the normal cable. So let's give it a go. So it's a flat pin at the top. Oh, let's... oh yeah, no, we've got it in. That's all right. That works just about. But yeah, I'd, I think the original one would probably come out further. Let's make a speaker cable up or two for that matter. Thank you. 
Okay, so I've made up both my wires, but I don't trust my handiwork because inside these, the screw terminals, it wasn't immediately obvious which terminal related to which connector on the end. And therefore, I could have these wires swapped over halfway round. So to make sure that isn't the case, I've broke out the multimeter. So if we just put it in the spaced type connector here and attach it up to that at the other end. And you might better hear, that's right. That's all wired up correctly. So let's give it a go. Now, rather surprisingly, even when using those CX50 speakers, the audio still distorted if you set it above six on the volume scale. It goes rather thin and crispy and strips all the bass off. However, as long as you keep the volume below that threshold, it does sound really nice and rich. It sounds much better through the CX50s. So after setting the volume to the maximum it could go to without distorting, I checked the sound levels with a decibel meter just to see if there was any increase to the volume level when using these external speakers. And it turns out it's the built-in speakers that are able to be played louder without distortion becoming noticeable. Now that might be because the higher quality external speakers with them producing a better quality of sound make the distortion more noticeable at lower volumes. I also tested out the external speakers with a record player, and whilst the volume from this wasn't any different than when playing a cassette or the radio, its sound quality was much improved over using the built-in speakers. It seemed like a sensible idea to try the speakers with a source that didn't distort, so I wired them up to my Sony digital music player system. It's hard to believe I've owned this for 10 years now. It's one of Sony's last quality audio components before they gave up on hi-fi separates. As for how the speakers sounded though, well, they've got a pleasant neutral sound, but they're definitely at their best when used at moderate volumes. I suspect that a more modern speaker of a similar size would be able to produce more bass. But if you prefer to err on the side of clearer reproduction at sensible volumes, then these will do that job just fine. So it turns out that in the end, these CX50 speakers weren't the key to unlocking some hidden audio capabilities that were buried inside the BO System 10. But that said, in their own right, these are lovely little speakers. They've got new sponges, new rubbers, and I deliberately chose this orange colour because I thought it would look interesting, and it really does. I don't think you could get anything as striking as these new nowadays for the same price that I paid for these with a similar sound quality. I mean, really, I think these are a pretty good buy and I'm uh, going to keep hold of them because anytime I need to attach some speakers up to a, a device that doesn't have any, these seem a suitable choice. Now, I'm just going to pop that down there because I think there might be something a little bit wrong with my BO System 10 age-related issues because why would you have a volume control that goes all the way up to 10 and yet when you get to five if you go beyond there it all sounds distorted and harsh and nasty also talking of this being a center of a hi-fi system i'm not quite convinced with that idea having a record player and these external speakers with it really comes up with quite a clumsy system that I think you'd be better off just using this as a little stereo radio cassette and getting yourself a separate mini system rather than trying to set all this up. But I suppose at least you had the option to do that, but it's certainly something that I can't imagine many people utilizing. But anyway, hope you've enjoyed having a look at this here today. I say I'll pop a link in the video description. There's only one bloke selling a few of these but uh, if anyone else is interested 
maybe it'll do you a weird colour as well. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.